Thank you for staying with us on Citizen Sunday Live. Now, for years, the push for community-centered climate projects has been amplified, with the government of Kenya mainstreaming the planting of trees. However, the uptake of exotic species has led to biodiversity destruction as an unintended consequence, ravaging farmlands as well as water towers. But the rollout of a mobile application that matches indigenous trees to the specific location it can thrive is filling the gap, where farmers also earn money. Laura Tieno now reports on the incorporation of technology into community projects in what seems to be a promising venture in restoring degraded forests. At Bonde Village in Siaya County, 36-year-old Pauline Odwar is at work. The towering canopies swing to the rhythm of the morning wind as her tools break the soil. These are not just trees. These are a lifeline. For the last one year, Pauline has been nurturing these indigenous trees, a venture that was frowned upon by her neighbors and family members. Kenya's tree cover stands at 12.1 percent according to the 2021 National Forest Resource Assessment. In a drive to increase the area under forest, the government launched various initiatives, including the gazettement of Mazingira Day on 10th of October. The inaugural launch saw the deployment of government muscle in planting trees, the species notwithstanding. Fred Onyango has been planting trees for nearly two decades drawn by the aesthetic appeal of exotic trees. exotic trees the same shamba. But when I learned about the, the indigenous trees, I saw that uh, the texture of the soil, the fertility of the soil was coming back. Kenya's history of exotic trees dates back to the early 90s, where the trees were planted for fuel for the steam engines during the construction of the Kenya-Uganda Railway. The introduction of the Shamba system in the 1940s saw an influx of exotic trees to meet the rising demand for timber, with the World Bank pumping funds that saw the establishment of up to 170,000 hectares of forest plantations. However, decades later, studies have linked the influx of exotic trees to the loss of biodiversity, prompting the rolling out of participatory forest management plans. How can we raise more seedlings that will be available for tree planting? As of now, we are at 850 million, but it's because we are putting more effort now on the infrastructure uh, to raise seedlings and also to ensure that um, uh, whatever is planted can actually grow. Through these systems, the Kenya Forest Service works with local communities to restore originally indigenous forests through phased removal of mature exotic species such as cypress and eucalyptus. We are testing uh, different incentives mechanisms. So how can we be able to trace or to monitor the trees that are planted? People are not just planting and going, that people are actually growing them. So with this tree, this app helps us to track the trees. We can be able to monitor the trees as they grow in the field over time. So this is for the, those are the My Farm the Trees app uses blockchain technology in tracking the planting and growth of trees. Because there are areas which are technology. The base application, accessed by the coordinator, contains a database of the available seed species and their specific location. But then all the information comes back together. The second base has the locations of the specific tree nurseries, a digital market where each scanned seedling sits on a virtual shelf with assigned codes that are checked out upon distribution. 
to see what you The third have. base, accessed by field trainers, involves the tracking of the planted seedlings. The trainers periodically check on the trees, taking pictures that are then factored into the calculation of the accrued credits paid to the farmer. That money currently comes from our project as a pilot phase, but then in the long run is that we want to build a model that other organizations, other companies can then put funds into this kind of uh, system and farmers can continue to benefit continuously as long as, for as long as they continue to improve in the environment, which will be beneficial for everyone in the long run. The incentive model operates on the premise of the long period of growth of indigenous species with exotic trees promising returns in under 10 years periodic cash incentives for indigenous trees are expected to encourage farmers to nurture the trees to full maturity the seedlings are given free of charge under the pilot program frederick who has about 200 indigenous trees has already received the first tranche of payment you know at first i was surprised I said maybe somebody has just put this money mistakenly into my phone. So I just started wiring money into other accounts directly so that everything thinks to recover it is already gone. Then uh, later on I, I got a call from the in charge that uh, have you ever seen uh, such a, a certain message there? I said yes. Of how much? It was 55,000. In 2016, Kenya committed to the Bone Challenge, which connects to the larger global goal of restoring 350 million hectares of degraded and deforested landscapes by 2030. The government calling for a multi-sectoral approach in attaining its national goal. Even as Africa shifts towards mobilizing for climate adaptation funding, stakeholders are pushing for funds to support local sustainable restoration projects. They need to see evidence, and this is evidence we are generating to them. Yeah, and they need to talk to the farmer because the farmer is, is one thing. Everyone goes to COP and they, they're always having, uh, I would say, the farmer in mind, but not at heart. Under the pilot program, more than 3,000 farmers from Siaya, Turkana, and Laikipia counties have been onboarded. A similar program has also been rolled out at earmarked sites in Cameroon. Trees are touted as the green gold, and with the country's ambitious plan to restore 5.1 million hectares of degraded land, it is targeted projects such as this that are proving a lifeline. What remains to be seen is whether other parts of the country will also adapt this strategy in order to attain the targets. Laura Otieno, Citizen TV, in Siaya County.